What is going on guys? It's me, Mojo Jojo Plays, back again with a new series on this channel. This is World of Mixed Martial Arts 5. A, uh, obviously in case you can't tell, it's Mixed Martial Arts Simulator game. Where you take over a company and try to take that company as far as you can in, uh, in this game world. So because this isn't a UFC game or anything like that, I'm using the uh, the default database that comes with the game. Mainly because I don't really know much about MMA. So, to be totally honest, I've just been playing this game for a little bit, been enjoying it. So, I thought, why not make a YouTube series? So, we are playing as this guy here. His name is Rory. He is the uh, new CEO of a British company called uh, BCF, British Cage Fight. And uh, yeah, CEO just means we can, we can get sacked if we do really bad. The owner doesn't like us, things like that. Yeah, I've booked two shows already. Uh, I haven't happened because you need a month you know, to train and get warmed up and everything for the actual fight. And before we start, let's uh, have a little little quick tour of the company. It shows our biggest stars at the moment. Just so, just so you guys know roughly who we're, who we're dealing with, this company. So the main man himself, we have Mr. Carter Porter. Potter, sorry. He is our heavyweight champion from uh, New Zealand. Not, even though it's British cage fighting, he is uh, not from Britain. He is a very, very good fighter. In case you're looking at these stats here, he looks pretty amazing. Pretty good in cage, which is great because we use cages. He is going to be a major stay, hopefully, for the time being. He has another, do, do, at least three fights guaranteed in uh, the next two years that he needs to have. And uh, yeah, five fights overall, and then his contract's up, and anyone can come and sign him. Hopefully, I can keep him around because he is going to be a massive star in this company. Second, we have Stafford Alloy from Brixton. He is the number two heavyweight in the company at the moment, number 20 in the world. He is a pretty big star in this in this company. He's good enough to be a uh, a national, uh, low-level national uh, fighter. That's his, uh, <laughs> not, you know I mean, that is his popularity. He is, more recently, he's lost his last two fights. So he's not really going to be number two for long, I don't think. So yeah, he lost his last fight to Dave Lennon. And he lost a, a title match against Potter himself. So he's probably, because he's 38, he's probably going to be dropping down the card slightly in the next few months. Which is unfortunate because he is very good. That's he looks very good as well, very well rounded. Up next we have uh, Lenny McFadden. He is our light heavyweight champion, fourteen and one from Falkirk. He is. Value. He's almost good enough. Well, he's almost popular enough to be a national fighter, but he's only known in the UK. But if I wanted to go over to Europe, do a few shows. We might have a few issues with him as the main eventer. Which kind of sucks, but what can you do? And then, uh, yeah. He is also a pretty pretty competent fighter. Looking forward to see what he can do as our light heavyweight champion. However, once we get to this guy, uh, yeah. I'm looking more at him, to be honest. We have the Spartan. Davis Spyro. He is 20 and 7, 6 and 3 in this company. He is our number three middleweight, number four middleweight, but he's a very big star. Very, he's uh, all right in Japan as well. Very, very good fighter. He is a. Uh, unfortunately, he's been slipping down the card recently since he lost to the champion in uh, May of last year in game. But yeah, he is going to be pretty, uh, pretty important to this middleweight division. Was it middleweight? Yeah, middleweight. Then we have Mr. Doug Hansen. He is our lightweight champion from Falkirk, Scotland again. 8-1 and one in the company, 20-5 and five overall. He is 34 years old, but that's not 
too big a problem. Because he is still, once again, a very good fighter. He's not so good at kicks, but I mean, he's a wrestler, boxer, what do you expect? A judo, more like. He he did beat the uh, the champion in an upset, so he wasn't supposed to be champion, but he beat Seth O'Brien in a major upset. Pretty big star for this level. Next we have Gary McSwegan from Edinburgh. He is our number three light heavyweight. A hot shot Scott. Once again, good boxer. That's probably about it, to be honest. Pretty pretty big star. Next we have Rob Baines. He got submission of the year last year in game. Like before the game started. Very, very good wrestler. Very good. Uh, very consistent. He is... Yeah, pretty big. Pretty big star for this, this company from Norwich. He is uh, probably going to be our middleweight champion for a little while. He's won the last three in a row. Seven and two in this company. We have David Webb, who is our welterweight champion. Pretty pretty big star in both uh, Europe and UK, which is great. He's from Kent. He has uh, only ever wrestled for BCF, not wrestled, fought for BCF. He is a he is a wrestler. Very good, uh, very consistent. Good at wrestling. Good submissions. Good scrambling. Things like that. He is a, a pretty boring fighter. He uh he has a game plan where he just try and try and grind grinds out as many wins as possible. So he might not put on the most entertaining fights, but he is um yeah, he's very good. A very good fighter. Next we have our number two welterweight. This is uh the mercenary, Mills Milali from Dublin. Pretty good boxer as far as I remember. Um maybe not. He's a he's a decent boxer. Decent wrestler. He doesn't ever kick people though. Fair, because he's kicking. His kicking is absolutely horrendous. If that makes sense. And finally, this guy here, 27 year old from uh, Russia. Number 24 light heavyweight in the world. Number 2 in British cage fighting. He is 11 and 0. And all 11 of his fights have been for this company. He is hopefully going to be our big star going forward. He's a great wrestler, a pretty decent uh, boxer as well. Uh, pretty, yeah, pretty good all rounder. Apart from his kicking and his muay thai, muay thai. Sorry. He is hopefully going to be our light heavyweight champion at some point. Obviously, it's MMA. You can't. You're not supposed to fix it. He's a pretty pretty decent star for this uh, for this company. Uh, pretty low in Europe, but yeah. All right. And uh, yeah, so we have our first two two fight cards booked. We have Baines versus Olsen. This is going to be for the middleweight uh, mid middleweight title. Hennig Olsen is our number two guy. Let's have, let's have a quick look at him. He is from Copenhagen. Not a bad fighter. I don't think he'll beat Baines. But yeah. If he does, I wouldn't complain. But I think Baines is on another level. To be honest. He is a very heavy favourite. But I wanted to have a big match to uh, start off. We also have our Best of British TV show. With uh, five not with five main card fights. Three preliminary. Same here. We've got six fights on uh, Baines versus Olsen. And uh, three preliminary fights. But yeah. Now, other than that. I'm going to look at the shortlist quick. These are a bunch of uh, fighters. I've shortlisted. That I want to try and bring in at some point. Some of them later down the line. But a lot of them I need. I want right now. So this guy Alberto Pessora. He is the number six welterweight in the world. Because our welterweight division. Is absolutely horrendous. We have uh, Alexander Ivanov. He is a 11 and 1, I believe, from Sigma. Sigma is our closest rival in Europe. He is the heavyweight champion there, number 21 in the world. Uh, who else is on here that I really need to bring in? 
this guy, I'm I'm either thinking of bringing in or letting him have like one or two more fights in Sigma before before bringing him in. I don't know how many fights he's got left to be honest. He's a standard fighter with uh, three fights guaranteed, but I can bring him in whenever because he's not exclusive. Uh, this guy, I don't really remember a lot of these. If there's a name I recognize, I will talk about it. Um. Yaz, this guy is very young for the future. He's 19 from London. He is an arsehole. But that's good because he's very marketable because of that. This is someone I want to bring in. Big big trouble. Uh, he's 9-0 and in Sigma. Pretty good. Not the best, but he's a heavyweight. He'll go up a little bit. More he trains because he is only 26. This guy here is a lightweight, I believe. Uh, Louis Pesora, brother of the the first guy I showed, he's a arguably a, a bigger star, a bigger, better wrestler, better wrestler, better fighter. But he is in the division below his brother, so he is the lightweight champion in Sigma. Um, I don't know who this is, but this is someone I need to bring in. Uh, that Matty Curry from Helsinki, he's also at Sigma, number twenty two light heavyweight in the world. Uh, who else? This is the main man we want to bring in. If we want to expand into Europe, this is the guy. He is pretty amazing. Nico Soldo, he is 19, uh, 19 and 1, I believe that is. He's only ever lost once to uh, Matt Curry, but then knocked him out twice. He is phenomenal. So, the gladiator, Nico Soldo. I'm going to just offer him a contract right now. I'm going to give him uh, four years, ten fights. I don't know. I'll give him uh, seven fights, eight fights. No, seven fights. Four of those will be guaranteed. What's his contract? He wants 11,000 a fight. Oh, no. Oh, if I want to expand out into Europe, which is the main plan, this guy has got to be a big part of it. If he wins, he'll get 22,600 per fight, which he will win because he is better than anyone. I think he's the number two, and uh, he's the number 10 pound for pound fighter in the world and the number two light heavyweight in the world. I need to bring this guy in before somebody bigger than me brings him in. So I'm going to offer him four years, seven fights, four fights. He is not happy with that. Oh no. Uh, i about put that up to 10% everything. And then I'll put that to 12,500 a fight. That might have been a mistake. However, I'm really only going to use this guy in Europe because his name value in, in British Ireland is not that good. I'll be totally honest. But this guy, uh, when we go out to Europe for some big fights, he's going to go out there and be our uh, main event guy. Who else is on here? We do have another one here I need to find. A hand grenade. Valentin. Teniev. So it says here he's been he is eleven and zero. He's from Russia. Eighteenth best light heavyweight in the world. He is a great boxer, I believe. Mixed martial artist. He can he's knocked out pretty much everyone, or sub submitted everyone. Let's go with that. And it says here he they're waiting for the inevitable showdown between Nico Soldo and this guy. So my plan is to hire both of them. Uh, I'll give you uh, eight fights. Exclusive, three years. Four guaranteed. Will you accept that? Yeah, he, he, he'll, he'll accept that, he said. So I'm trying to basically snipe the fight away from Sigma. When I try and expand out into uh, into Europe. Who else is on here that I wanted to look at? 
a lot of these guys are people that they need to do a few more fights to try and uh, get a bit better before I sign them. Those two are the main two. Now I might go for the uh, what's his name? This guy as well. I like the Viking. He's decent. Uh, I will give you two, uh, three years, seven fights, four are guaranteed, uh, exclusive. Will you just accept that? Unless someone else puts another offer in for these guys, I want to make sure that I try and get him to come in. Yeah, for now, those three are my only three signings I want to bring in for now. So yeah. We are going to jump forward a bit until hopefully they've signed and closer to our first show. So yeah, I'll see you guys then. And we are back. It is now uh, Monday week 3 of January. And uh, not going to lie, I did offer a few more contracts after saying I wouldn't. But they're all worth it because a lot of uh, other companies uh, put bids in for them as well. And... Don't ask me how, because we are the third highest ranked company in the world. We managed to beat both uh, Alpha and Gamma. Well, we beat Alpha. Alpha bidded for pretty much everyone. And, uh, well, everyone that we wanted. And I somehow managed to beat all of them. Like, all of the offers. So, we're going to go through here quickly. First of all, Big Trouble, Jack O'Lander Weird. He is here. He's exclusive. He's going to be here for uh, six fights, three of which are guaranteed over two years. So he'll be here for a little while. Uh, next, Luis Pesora. He is a bit more money. He is going to be here for two years, eight fights, five are guaranteed. So he's going to be probably fighting a bit. I should have expand, put a bit more, a few more years on that, to be honest, but... Whoops. Hopefully he'll stick around. Got Dag Kruger. Alpha bidded on this guy. And, uh, yeah. He is uh, here for two years. So up to seven fights. Four are guaranteed. I want him to fight a little bit. Next we got Alberto Pesora. He's going to bulk up the welterweight division. Or he's just going to completely destroy it. One or the other. Then we got Alexander Ivanov. He is pretty pretty good heavyweight. He's here for three years for at least five fights. Eight eight fights in the contract, five guaranteed. We kind of have the main two that I wanted, to be honest. Nico Soldo. He is here for twelve thousand five hundred a fight. If he wins he gets twenty five grand. My god. He is here for three years, at least four fights, seven on the uh, seven seven fights, four guaranteed. Which means over the next three years or so, we really need to start building up in Europe if otherwise this guy will be one, far too expensive, probably, and two, will definitely leave to join either Gamma or Alpha. And last but not least, Hand Grenade Valentin Teniev. He is here for eight fights, two years. Four, ga four fights are guaranteed. I should have offered him at least three, to be honest, but... Whoops. I didn't think. So, yeah. I'm going to book a fight card for March. Quick. Uh, maybe our first foray into Europe. Who knows? But yeah. Sponsorship's looking good. Uh, not really. It's looking awful. Uh, yeah. I'm going to book a card for March. And then skip forward to the actual uh, first first card now. And then we'll see how that goes. But yeah. See you guys then. Okay. Hey, Welcome everyone to our first fight card. This is going to be the only one in this episode. So uh, yeah. So because there are nine fights on this card, I'm not going to go through all of them. Well, if there's something important, I will uh, I will tell you. Or I'll see what happens. 
So a lot of these fights here are, uh, except for maybe this guy, Morgan uh, Wakari Warawa. Morgan Damari, oh, that's his name. He is massive, by the way. Look at him. What a beast this guy is. Anyway. Right. So he's fighting against uh, Linton Wren, who's six foot two. He's uh, four inches shorter than him. It's a good test. So hopefully it's a good fight. It usually isn't, to be honest. I have played BCF a few times, only made like one or two cards, but then I thought, oh, you know, let's make a YouTube series on it. This guy is a, an interesting fighter, let's say that. So we are going to skip. Uh, this guy, we are going to not watch that one. I'm not really too interested in this fight either, to be honest. I might watch this one. I haven't made my mind up. Actually, yeah, we'll watch We'll watch him, see how he does. Um, Ivan Orr. Not really. Uh, these ones, no. No. Maybe we'll watch four fights this, ep this episode. We'll watch uh, Gregory O'Hara versus Jordan Idol because he is uh, undefeated. 5 0, he looks pretty cool. Versus uh, Golden Idol, who is decent. Jaden Carp, he is a uh, 7 0. He is a. This is going to be a uh, submission specialist, I think. Oh, no, it's not. Never mind. I forgot I changed the fight. He's a Kung Fu guy, number four world to wait. Jaden Carp is our number eight, but he is very good. And then we'll watch the main event as well. So we're going to watch four fights this episode. Hopefully it doesn't take too long, to be honest, but yeah. So yeah, let's get right into this. The first fight. Well, the first card. Rob Baines is 7-2. and two. Hen Henning Olsen is 8-3 and three for the middleweight title. We'll also see the big dog, Dave Lennon. Uh, who is in a, who is also here tonight? We have uh, rock steady Gordon Idol fights for the first time since losing to Doug Hansen, and we have Gregory Chief O'Hara who fights for the first time since Baines versus Schneider. Last but not least, we have a uh, Ram Ram Jam Buchan versus a uh, well, he got knocked out by Ginger Beaumont in his last fight. So we're looking at this at the main event. This is his fourth main event for Baines. And yeah, they've never fought before. They think Baines is the heavy favourite, which I uh, I agree, to be honest. There's not really many people that are stars in the welterweight division that can fight this guy. This is a bit of an interesting one. I didn't think he'd be 7-0 seven, seven and o to be the favourite. Yeah, Carp is the big favourite to win. Oh my god. I've not booked a very uh, fair show, let's say with that. By the looks of things, O'Hara is the favourite in this one by a long, long, long way. Okay, this one's maybe a bit better. Uh, Christopher Drew is our young, he's a young guy, 24, 4-1. and one. He is a former Rookie of the Year. Not a bad fighter versus uh, the big dog. He is quite a big dog. Anyway. This, is, this one's a bit better. See if... Uh, Mal Beswick can beat uh, Sid Morgan. 11 versus 13 in the lightweight division. We have Ram Jam Pukan and uh, Ivor. Ivor Orr. Ivor Orr is the heavy favourite. Number 6 versus the number 7 in the division. And we have uh, Morgan the Maui versus uh, Halifax Smasher, Linton Wren. We're going to watch this fight. He is 7. 7 people pick him to be the favourite. It's his debut for the company. Then we have uh, Jerome Atkins versus Kush Singh. People are thinking Atkins is the heavy favourite. He's got 5 inch reach advantage. But he is 5'10. This guy's probably about what? Jesus Christ. He is very small for a welterweight fighter. I might, might move him down to a lightweight. And then last but not least, we have Baines versus Olsen. We'll skip those first two fights and we'll see how those go at the end. Let's get right into Morgan versus Linton. It's a close fight. I usually don't pick a close fight for this guy. I usually want to see him destroy someone. But I figured it's a good test. Let's see what happens. We're going to start the timer and see if this is so. Richard Joyce, the referee. We've got Archibald, Bobby and Jimmy, the judges. Let's see how this goes. 
We've got two wrestlers. Oh my, he's done a takedown in the first seven seconds. Oh my God. Come on, Morgan. He might be about to finish this in the first round. My God. Yeah, this Morgan, Morgan is a, a big boy. It's going to be hard to, but hard to beat this guy. Big strike. Oh, this is going to be a first round knockout. Yep. TKO in two minutes, 30 seconds. Morgan Maori has destroyed him. Jesus Christ. He usually does a really, really poor fight, to be honest, because he usually rests his people against the cage. He got a takedown in seven seconds and basically knocked him out from there. Jesus Christ. Morgan Maori, he thanks everyone. Connected to KO Fighters, that's his team that he's in. Sponsors for supporting him. He uh, celebrates his win. Well, he celebrates his first win in BCF. He really knows how to interview. Uh, he knows how to use these interviews to sell himself, which is great. I'm going to jump forward now to the next fight. This is Gregory o Chief O'Hara versus Rocksteady Golden Idol. Uh, it's sort of close, but not really. He's still the favourite. 10 and 0 versus uh, Golden Idol. Let's see how this one goes. Right, referee Warren Munro. Judges are Jimmy, Stephen, and Don. See how this fight starts. Is there going to be a takedown in two seconds again? No, there's a bit more respect in this one. This is going to be a, more of a boxing fight. Idol connects with, doesn't connect with a jab. And O'Hara connects with a few. O'Hara gets a few. They start to trade blows. This is a... They're struggling to hit each other at the moment in the first minute of the first round. Dodges a, O'Hara dodges a right hand and counterattacks. Not bad. O'Hara dodges another one and then hits uh, another jab in a counterattack. Oh, God. Right, O'Hara throws three quick punches and doesn't hit any of them. Right. O'Hara's hitting into his body now. That's a pretty dangerous thing to do. Goes for an uppercut, but... Oh, my God! O'Hara just got knocked out by an uppercut, just like that. Oh, my God. Idol is going to win. He's going to defeat... Oh, Jesus Christ. I completely missed what happened there. I misread it. So, we'll, we'll, we'll cut back a bit, see what happened there. Rocksteady has defeated Gregory O'Hara. He's now 10 and 1. Oh no. But let's see what happened there again, because I completely missed that. I don't. Oh, right, hang on. We'll go down again. So O'Hara hits a, a right shot to the body of uh, Golden. And then Idol doesn't connect with a left jab, but then hits a wicked right uppercut, knocking O'Hara down. He knows it's a golden opportunity and quickly pounces on him. Look him to finish him off by raining down punches. He fires away. He's eating shot after powerful shot. And then the ref jumps in. Stops him in 2 minutes and 3 seconds. Uh, 53 seconds into the first round. What a fight. The winner by TKO is Gordon Idol. That was a good fight. That didn't go at all how I thought it would. Golden Idol is going to uh, move up the card a little bit now. Looking at that. My God. Uh, Golden Idol gives a name check to everyone at the London Kickboxing Academy, all the various sponsors and his friends and family and supporters. The interviewer asks who would be interested in fighting next, and he replies that Doug Hansen would be a tough challenge, but one that he'd be interested in trying. Okay, that might be his next fight. Next, we've got Jaden Carp, who is a heavy favourite against the baby faced assassin Steve Griffin. Blackpool versus Brighton, 7 0 versus 17 8. In the, uh, in the world weight division, this, hopefully, Jaden Carp can submit this guy. Let's see how it goes. So far, none of the fights have gone how I thought they would. 
Archibald, Bobby and Jimmy are the judges for this one. Round one starts. Touch gloves, a bit of respect at least, so that's good. They clinch up, which is probably better for Jaden, to be honest. Harp is trying to get him against the cage, which he does. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. This could be a boring fight. Goes for a takedown straight away. And he manages to. Griffin is Griffin is down. Carp is firing a few punches away. Going for a Americana submission. And he taps him out straight away. Oh my god. In one minute and twenty six seconds, Jaden Carp has tapped out Steve Griffin. That didn't take long. Jaden Carp is our uh, number eight welterweight. This guy is number four, I believe. Yeah, that that didn't take long. God damn. Right. Jaden Carp thanks everyone at KO spon at KO Fighters and all his sponsors for supporting him. The interview asks who'd be interested in fighting next, and he replies to Ian Fussell. Better get prepared because he's coming for him. Oh, okay. Come on, Jaden. 25 years old as well. He's a real good fighter there. And last but not least, it is the main event fight. Middleweight champion Rob Baines going against well, the Sandman Rob Baines versus Henning the Terminator Olsen. This, hopefully, this could be five rounds, because it's a main event and a title fight. But the five rounds, five minutes each uh, for the main event. Three rounds, five minutes each for everything else. But every fight we've seen has been a knockout in like two minutes. So, yeah. 35-year-old, very experienced, versus 31-year-old. 33 and 11, he's had a lot of fights in his career. 18 and 7. Wigan-style hooking versus kickboxing. Heavy favourite. This is either going to be five rounds or it's just going to be a tap out in like two minutes. Matt Wooster is a referee. Bobby, Jimmy and Steven as the judges. Round one begins. Funny how Olsen is hitting big punches already to try and get started. There's no touch of gloves. A bit disrespectful to be honest. Catches Baines with a right hook. Misses all strikes in his next combo and ends with a head kick. Baines quickly shoots on Olsen. Goes for a takedown. Oh, he has the takedown, sorry. He's looking to get Baines looks to get past the guard. And Olsen comfortably blocks the attempt. And he's going for a submission. And Baines is able to grab a leg lock and force him to tap out in four minutes. Every fight that we watched was a first round. By 3 minutes 53 seconds, he got Hennig Olsen into a uh, leg lock, tapped him out. That was very fast. Let's see how quickly that went again. So he went to shoot him, shoot him down at 3 minutes, with 3 minutes 34 remaining. Gets the takedown real quick. Tries to get past the guard, completely fails. And then he's looking to create space for a leg lock. Trying to break the guard. Instantly gets on the leg. Grabs a leg lock and forces him to tap out. That was a good fight. Not great. But um, yeah. There's only six punches and one kick in the entire fight. And then he tapped out. So Rob Baines gives a name check to everyone at Rob Baines fighting. All these various sponsors and all these friends, family and supporters. With the, with the BCF middleweight title around his waist, he celebrates continuing his reign as the champion. So, yeah, that was a pretty pretty decent show, to be honest. Oh, I mean, only just decent. Critical rating's good. We need to be at least 60 or more. And then, uh, which we got. Commercial rating, 46. Just about good enough. We made a lot of money off pay-per-view, which is great. A lot of submissions tonight, to be honest. Popularity increased. Perfect. Um, right. 
So knockout of the night was a knee from Jeremy Atkins. Uh, Jerome Atkins, sorry. Bloody hell. And the uh, fight of the night, Jaden Carp versus Steve Griffin. Fair enough. That was on the main card at least. And submission of the night went to Rob Baines. Yeah, that that's fair, I suppose. And we made $183,000, which is perfect. But yeah. That's the game, pretty much. Rob Baines defends the title. We've got Prospect Watch here. No, I don't want him. New Mal. All these people, because they've had a fight, their contracts are running out. So I need to either offer them a new one or let them go. See, how that, see what happens there. And then uh, we'll look at the finances quick. Sponsorships were 14,000, which is great. Pay-per-view, 191,000 on pay-per-view. Merchandise was good. We had a good month. Good good start of the month, sorry. Because we've still got another show this month, so that might drop a little bit. But yeah, that is going to be our first episode. We're going to update the rankings, see how it looks. With all the new people as well. So Morgan has gone up to number 16 from 17. All these people have dropped down. Uh, who's had a fight? He's not had a fight yet. But he's booked for a fight, I think. Oh no, he did have a fight. Yeah, he tapped out uh, Persglove instantly. And then Alexander Ivanov has gone straight up to number 3 since signing. These guys have dropped down, which ain't great. Light heavyweight. Yeah, this was this was inevitable. Everyone in division in the division has dropped down because Valentin and Nico Soldo are in. Which yeah, that that's fair. I feel bad for Tycon because he's a good fighter. I might put him up against uh Valentin at some point. Maybe not. Uh, who else we have? Middleweight. Henny Golson has dropped down to number number five from number two. Lost. Everyone else moved up one. So Ginger Beaumont is the next next contender at the moment with uh, Davis Spyro, the Spartan, and Hans Peter Schneider went up to number four. Body Castles moved up because Ivanor lost. Uh, next we have Welterweight. This is going to change as well because we signed Pesora. So Pesora is the number number one contender instantly, but he's not had a fight yet in this company. So I kind of want to book him in a fight first. And then uh, Jaden Carp has gone up to number seven after winning. He wants to fight this guy, I think, which is weird because he's below him, but okay. And lightweight, not much changing here. Since uh, Golden Idol's moved up to number three, well, he was number three. This guy has moved down to a number six. Luis Basora is number number one contender, but also hasn't had a fight, so he needs to be booked in a fight first to see how good he actually is. And that's everyone. We have booked another fight. This one is our first one in Europe. We're going to Germany, where um the main event is going to be Hand grenade, Valentin Teniev versus M My Matthew Michael Kirby. Now he's 2 0. He won't be 2 0 for much longer, I'll be totally honest, because I, I have a feeling he is going to get absolutely destroyed. Because that's, that's what I put him in this fight for, I'll be totally honest. Alexander Ivanov is going up against Vic Milligan. Poor guy. <laughs> but yeah, but Hans Peter Schneider because he's German is going to be fighting in this one. We've, we've booked a lot of German fighters because we're going to Germany. But yeah, that's going to be a show in the future. We might do two shows in the next episode, maybe three. But yeah, that's going to be it for this one. I hope you have enjoyed, and uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.